Good morning, everyone. As you guys saw in the thumbnail, I have obtained my very first rugged weapon. As you can see in the background, it's currently like three in the morning where I am right now. And uh, I just couldn't sleep, so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to log on to my Ship 4 character, grind a little bit, and hit level 65. And long and behold, in under one hour, I managed to get this beauty rugged rifle. Now, I won't be keeping this because, you know, I don't really play Ranger, so I will be popping this onto the market. As you can see, there's only one rugged rifle at the moment for 75 million, but I will be selling mine for 50 million, so if anyone does play on Ship 4, feel free to buy it, because I could definitely use the Masetta. Now, before we continue on with the video, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily, so if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. All right, since I managed to get a rugged rifle, I think it's probably a good time to talk about Kaisers versus rugged because I know a lot of people are wondering, should I go for the rugged weapons if I have a fully decked out Kaiser or not? So we're going to open a couple spreadsheets and look at all the mathematical breakdowns because I know some of you guys just really love number crunching. I will leave all the sources in the description below. Um, just in case you're wondering why it's suddenly bright outside, it's because uh, there is a time skip. You know, when I was recording at 3 in the morning, I don't sound very coherent, so uh, I just deleted all of that and we're just redoing it. So I know some of you are super impatient and just want the TLDR. So the TLDR is there are three separate potentials on the Rugged series. The non-fixa variant of the Rugged, as long as it is the defensive one or the PP one, will give you 2.34% more DPS compared to your regular Kaiser weapon. However, if your Rugged has the Chase variant, it is actually a DPS decrease of 3.13%. So for those who want to know more details on the different potentials on the Rugged weapon, so you can see over here, this is the Rugged Rifle. This is the one that I got. It has Citadel unit as its potential. This is actually the defensive one. As you can see here at level four, it gives you potency plus 25%, generates three damage resistance plus 40% barriers. Each barrier has its 30 second cooldown, which is individual by by the way and the cooldown of these shields are decreased by two seconds every enemy killed so this is extremely useful this is the defensive variant and this will give you a dps increase over your kaiser weapon because of this insane potency increase of 25 percent now the katana has grading unit as the potential and this is the pp variant so again potency plus 25 percent pp consumption minus 30 percent for 20 seconds when you consume 300 pp and there's a 10 second cooldown for this so again because you get this massive 25 percent potency increase it's still a DPS increase. Now the Rugged Wired Lance on the other hand gives you the Pursuit Unit. This unfortunately is not going to give you a DPS increase over the Kaiser weapon simply because at rank 4 it's potency plus 19% follow up attacks occur up to 3 times when you hit an enemy and there's a 5 second cooldown. Now there's a lot of variance on Pursuit Unit. The reason why it's a DPS loss is because it's very difficult to quantify how much this 3 times actually hits because it's a follow up attack that can occur up to three times so when you hit an enemy every five seconds there will be an aftershock or a mirage type of damage which will hit the same enemy one to three times so there's a lot of rng there's a lot of variance in this and this is why when we look at the spreadsheet over here the rugged chase variant actually is a three percent damage decrease simply because there's just too much rng involved and of course if you look at the potency it's only plus 19 percent versus the other ones which give you a whopping plus 25 percent however things change drastically as we go into the fixa territory because as we know our kaiser weapons cannot have fixas so when you do get a fixa then things start looking more interesting so if you do have the chase variant or the ones with the pursuit unit potential then you are looking for fixa attack two or above in order to break even However, if you have Fatal, you only need to have Fatal 1. And unfortunately, if you have a Fixa Termina, no matter what you get, it is still going to be a DPS loss simply because our critical rate is way too low. But if we look at the Rugged Weapons with the Defense or PP variants, well, it's always a DPS increase no matter what direction you go. However, the one that will give you the biggest DPS increase is going to be Fixa Fatal Level 5 at a whopping 9.38% DPS increase. This is pretty crazy. That's pretty huge. 
but to be honest, even Fixa Fatale 4 is also at 9.38%. The reason for this is because, well, you're only getting a little bit more crit chance that it actually doesn't affect the percentages, so um, there's that. But don't forget, you can actually use the multi-weapon to your advantage here. Let's say you're a big fan of the Wired Lances or even the Double Saber, but you don't like having that DPS decrease because you're like, yo, listen, I want to use the Rugged Weapon, but I don't like this potential. Well, lucky for you, you can actually multi-weapon a Katana with a Saber, for example. And what will happen is you will inherit the Katana's potential. So even when you switch over to your Rugged Saber, you will still gain the level 4 potential of the Rugged Katana, as long as the Katana is the main weapon. So this is the power of the Rugged series on where you can mix and match on whatever potential you want. So for example, if you're a hybrid braver, you can actually choose which potential you want. So let's say you want Citadel unit because you really like the damage resistance. Three barriers, 40% damage resistance, each barrier has its own individual 30 second cooldown. This is really, really nice because basically it's a cheat death because, you know, 40% damage resistance and you get the plus 25% potency. This is really, really nice. So what you can do is actually you can multi-weapon your rugged bow with your rugged katana and as long as the bow is the main weapon, your katana will actually get citadel units potential instead of having the grading unit potential. Now, likewise, if you want to go more offensive and you just want more PP regeneration on your bow, you can multi-weapon the katana with the bow. So as long as the katana is the main weapon, you will get grading units potential on your bow. So that is the main advantage of having a rugged weapon, being able to mix and match all the different potentials so that you can actually get the potential that you want for your own personal playstyle. Now, if you want to look into the nitty gritty on how all of these numbers were actually produced, you can scroll down here and there are a ton ton of numbers which uh, honestly I have no idea what they mean but you can look at them and hopefully decipher what they mean all I know is these numbers are fairly accurate now I know a lot of people are asking about the obsidia weapons so these are the numbers for the obsidia weapons it is better than the Kaiser by 1.56 percent so if you really want an upgrade over the Kaiser or maybe you haven't made your Kaiser weapon the obsidia weapons are definitely an option to go to for those who are wondering what the potential actually does for the obsidia weapon as you can see here it's corrupt skating unit and it gives you 18% potency, 10% critical rate, 20% damage reduction, and natural PP recovery speed plus 30% for 20 seconds after a critical hit, and there's a 10 second cooldown on this. So this is relatively nice. The main reason why it's a DPS increase, in my personal opinion, is of course the damage, you know, that's three extra damage at max level, and of course the potency is plus 18% over the Kaiser weapons, which is only plus 17%, so it is 1% more, and thus there is that really small DPS increase increase of 1.56%. However, if we are comparing the Obsidia units with the Rugged weapons, the Rugged weapons still pull ahead. However, again, it's only for the defensive one and the PP one and not for the chase. So you will need to look at your specific Rugged weapon to make sure that it actually has the right potential because it drastically affects your average DPS. So in conclusion, if you can get a rugged weapon with a fixa, especially if it has the grading unit or citadel unit potential, then you are golden. You go with that weapon and you're good to go. It's going to be significantly stronger than your Kaiser weapon. However, do keep in mind that you will need to re-augment everything. So that is an investment cost. And after two months when we get Stia, you will be replacing that rugged weapon with something else as we will be getting 8-star, 9-star, 10-star rarity weapons, which are going to far outshine our current 7-star weapon. Weapons. Now regarding the Obsidia weapons, I think they are a side grade, you don't really need them, especially if you have a decked out Kaiser right now. The DPS increase is way too small to justify upgrading to those weapons because it's like 1.5% damage increase. Unless you really want to do it, sure, by all means, or maybe you want to try out other weapons, then using the Obsidia units is a very good choice. So in my case, you know, maybe I mean Braver all the time, but I need a rod, for example, then obtaining an Obsidia rod would be a good choice for me. However, seeing the drop rate of the Rugged weapons, I would prioritize a Rugged over the Obsidia, simply because the Rugged weapons just give more damage. The only exception to this is if your Rugged weapon has the Pursuit unit potential, because that is a DPS loss even compared to a Kaiser if it does not have a Fixa. So uh, that is pretty much the only exception. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye. What can I say except you're welcome for the
ही 